The stories that I'm about to tell you in just a minute revolve around a certain kind of wasp that's quite common here in Wisconsin and really across the Midwest. It's called the yellow jacket. It's smaller than hornets. It's actually smaller than some other wasps like paper wasps, but it is a really painful sting that you can get from it. It can be dangerous to some people if they're allergic and they are quite aggressive. And so the stories I'm going to tell you about are about getting stung and, and what, what happened and why I got stung and, and what the results were. So it's really two main times in my life that I got stung by these, these wasps and it's enough to kind of turn you off on them. I really don't like them. The first time was when I was four years old. We were living in apartments in a suburb here in Milwaukee called Thienesville, which is on the northwest side. And I, you know, we, I remember we lived in an apartment complex and there were a lot of wooded areas around. And I was seeing these, these wasps going in and out of a hole in the ground. So I went over to investigate, to check it out. And, you know, I thought it was kind of cool to watch them going in and out and in and out. And it must have been the middle of summer, I'm guessing, when they, you know, usually in spring, they're not doing very much and they're building their colony. And then they, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, grows exponentially. And so by midsummer, they're in full swing. They're carnivorous, so they're out there finding like carrion and other things to eat. They can also eat other types of things and they're bringing it back to the nest. So they, they are usually going in and out of one central location. Here's what I did as a dumb little four-year-old. <laughs> I took a stick and I thought it would be cool to shove it down there. And what do you think the result is? Well, you know, they came flying out and surrounded me and just started stinging. And I, all I remember of it is, you know, yelling because uh, they were they were on me, stinging me, and it hurt like hell. I mean, it's like, it's like little burning daggers going into you. And I remember my mom running, picking me up, and carrying me as fast as she could away from the swarm and into the apartment. And I here's one of the memories. I was looking down, and I could see six of them, like two here, two here, two here, and each of them had its its you know back arched and was just stinging repeatedly you know and each sting was hurting <laughs> and I was like wow this is awful so that was quite an experience to have as a kid and I don't know what she did in order to you know she must have given me Benadryl or something like that and some painkillers and you know I think I had a bath or something I don't know what the remedy was but I learned the lesson don't mess around with yellow jackets right. And definitely don't put sticks down into holes. I'll mention another thing too. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of bumblebees. I would say I love bumblebees almost as much as I hate yellow jackets. And uh, my sister, unfortunately, had a bad incident with bumblebees. I wasn't going to tell this story, but it, it just jogged my memory. When we moved out to uh, the hills of Delafield, this this subdivision that was more or less under underdeveloped for years and years and years, in between Delafield and Wales, um, there was a lot of open meadow space and woods and stuff like that. And so we would take these walks and we were in a vacant lot um, that was, you know, kind of wooded. And my mom put my sister down on a log that unfortunately contained a bumblebee nest. It was like a rotting log. And my sister was probably, so I was probably about seven. She would have been about five or so. She must have been kicking her feet on it and they came out and they started stinging her. Same sort of experience, except that with yellow jackets, there can be sometimes, you know, a thousand, two thousand, even more of them in the nest. With bumblebees, it's much, much smaller. And each bumblebee that stings you, that bumblebee is going to die because they only get to sting once. And so, you know, that was, that was her experience of that. Fast forward now about, well, I would have been in my 30s. So we're talking about, you know, 30 years beyond that. And we're living in Indiana on my, my family's land. I, I bought one of the houses that my family had. My grandfather and two of his brothers and, and you know, their wives all retired onto this place in Indiana 
uh, north of Rose Lawn and built the same kind of Wausau homes, uh, all, you know, basically within walking distance of each other. And um, we, we bought one of them. And so, you know, there was a lot of lawn to mow. And I'm, you know, I'm out there with a the push mower one day mowing the grass. And suddenly I feel something stinging me. And I look down and sure enough, there's a yellow jacket and it's stinging me through my sock. And I was like, what the hell is this, right? And so, you know, I shut off the mower and I brush it off. And then suddenly there's a couple more of them stinging me, right? And I'm like, oh, this is BS. I'm getting out of here. So I go inside the house and I was like, you know, these yellow jackets are stinging me. And, you know, my Uncle Aim was like, well, man, you probably went over one of their nests. They don't like the sound of that lawnmower. They came out and investigated and realized that you were the culprit and they started stinging you. So you should probably not mow the grass today. And I was kind of stubborn. So after, you know, putting some some stuff on the stings and uh, changing, you know, uh, the socks and, and, you know, getting ready to go mow, I was like, well, I won't mow in that area. The, the yard is big enough that there's plenty of other places for me to mow. And here's where it got weird. So I'm mowing along and this is over by the woods and suddenly I'm getting stung again. And now it's not just on my legs. Now it's like they're stinging me on my arms and there's more of these yellow jackets. And I'm like, this is a good, you know, 200 yards away from where I was getting stung before. How the hell are they finding me? You know, what's going on here? And, and by now I'm, you know, I'm in pain. I'm ticked off. I leave the mower there. I go inside the house and I'm like, man, this, this is not going to happen today. I guess I'll have to figure out another time to mow the grass. So, you know, I'm in a, you know, I've, I've got a, probably like 20 stings on me by that time. And, uh, I'm not feeling real good because of it. Not that I'm allergic, but you know, when you get stung that much, it's, it's, it's no fun. You're, there's a lot of, uh, pain throughout the area and yellow jacket stings are way more painful than a bee sting. So I'm in there and the next day I get up and here's where it gets even weirder. So at that time it was summer and we weren't using central air. We didn't actually have central air. So we had these screen doors right in the, the back and the front and we'd let, you know, we'd open the windows and let there be all sorts of air flow through the place. So I go to the back door and in front of the back door by the screen door, there is a cloud of yellow jackets just kind of floating in the air, buzzing around. And I was like, what the hell is this? Are, are, are they tracking me? Is there, is there, are they like, like crows where they know who the person is who did something that they didn't like? And then I go to the front door and there's another cloud of yellow jackets just kind of hanging in the air. You know, and, and it wasn't like uh, a whole, you know, swarm or anything. There may be 10 of them, but they were like on guard duty waiting to sting me when I would go outside. And so I had to go somewhere that day. So I, fortunately we had a, a garage that that's adjoined to the, the house. So I go downstairs and get into my car and open up the garage door, go to where I need to go. And there's no yellow jackets there. So they're, they're not bothering me. And then when I came back, back home again, um, they were gone and you know, it's afternoon and I, I don't see any of them. I still didn't go outside that day. And then the next day I went outside and, and I, I, I wasn't bothered by them. So I was like, what was this about? So I go on the internet and I look it up and sure enough, I found out that yellow jackets are not just dangerous because of their stings and, you know, responding aggressively to uh, noises or stepping on their nest or anything like that. They emit pheromones. And when a yellow jacket stings you, it tags you, as they say, with a pheromone that says, come here and sting the hell out of this guy some more, <laughs> which, you know, makes sense. If, if they're trying to protect their colony, uh, some scout stings, I don't know, uh, some animal that's going to go and, and bother them, all the rest of them come and, and sting that animal. And so that's what was going on. There was enough of that pheromone on me that the next morning there were still yellow jackets looking for me, waiting for me, wanting to give me, 
you know, their own sting. Then I, I read on further, and it turns out that if you kill a yellow jacket, if you crush it, which is exactly what I did when the first one stung me, I, I smacked it and then threw it away. When you do that, they also release a pheromone that, that says, come here and sting anything that's moving. So I really set myself up, not, not understanding how their, their uh, pheromones worked, for getting more stings and for this yellow jacket surveillance that was, was taking place. Knowing that in the future, I am very careful around those particular types of wasps. I don't, I don't kill them. I just, you know, try to avoid them as much as possible because I don't want to have a replication of that sort of incident. And I told my kids to, to do that as well because I don't want them getting stung either. The other thing that I'll say about yellow jackets is as I did research on them, I, I discovered that they're kind of a, you know, I understand that nature does things in all different ways, but some of those ways seem a little horrific to human beings. So yellow jackets effectively outstrip the carrying capacity of their environment. They, they begin with a nest that grows and then there's workers that go out and get things and bring it back. And it gets bigger and bigger, usually underground. And um, eventually it gets to the point where there's, there's too many workers and they even start eating their own larva. And it's you know really quite, quite a thing. They become extremely aggressive by August, September. If they're still around in October, they're not usually as bad, but they can still be, depending on what state you're in and how warm it stays, they can be a problem then. And you know, I'll, I'll just say, I understand we shouldn't anthropomorphize things like insects, but I just hate them. You know? <laughs> I think it's in part from getting stung as a kid and that other experience that I had. Um, as I mentioned, I love bumblebees about as much as I hate yellow jackets. And that is, at least as far as the yellow jackets part, I haven't talked about why I love bumbles so much, but that is, is why. I'll, I'll, I'll close on this, saying that bumbles are usually so docile that, um, you know, not only are they very attractive to see and they're great pollinators, you can actually touch them if you're really, really careful. And I've, I've done that. I've pet bumblebees in the past and it's, it's, you know, it's kind of, kind of nice to do. Um, you wouldn't do that with a yellow jacket. So that's a good thing to close on.